There's a difference between playing in a squad and being an effective squad in Escape from Tarkov. In my opinion, my favorite way to play is as a duo, and a good duo with good communication, map knowledge, and positioning is one of the most dangerous and effective things you can come across in game. So let's talk about how to do it. I also want to take a second to thank Mackie for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive right in. All the clips we're about to break down were recorded live on Twitch. My link is down below if you'd love to stop by and say hey. And before we hop in, YouTube tells me that over 65% of the people that watch my videos here on YouTube are not subscribed. So if you like the content, think about dropping a sub here. Anyways, so the main core kind of tenets of being a good duo and being an effective squad are really similar to just being good at the game applied differently. So you can think of it of if you know a lot about health and fitness and, and you know about macros and, and what to exercise, you're really just applying that information that you know differently. If you want to lose weight, if you want to build muscle, if you want to lean out, all of that stuff is really the same information applied differently. So that's basically it here. At the end of the day, the three things that are always key, whether you're a solo, a duo, or a five-man squad, is going to be map knowledge, positioning, and communication. Communication, obviously, is going to be the one that's more specific to squad play, as when you're a solo, you get to just kind of shoot everything. And there really is no substitute for just playing the game. The more you play, the more map knowledge you're going to get, especially if you are thinking about it specifically. You'd be surprised at how many kind of advanced maneuvers you can make with really simple map knowledge. We're actually going to show some of that, but obviously, the more you play, the like crazier angles you can get, the crazier flanks you can get. Map knowledge is huge. You have to dedicate time to that. There's no way skipping that. There's no way around that. Uh, another thing is positioning. This kind of is linked with map knowledge. We're going to talk about that in a minute, but positioning yourself so that you have, uh, you know, an escape, knowing when to position yourself, using sound, using other people's sound to mask your audio. It's one of the greatest strengths of a squad. You can have somebody suppressing and another person moving. Having good positioning, knowing what that means, knowing when to position yourself right so that you always have an exit and that you're always in the right spot to clean up a kill. And then finally, communication. As a squad, this is one of the biggest things that pull people down. Uh, if people are just derping around on Discord or if people don't have like uh, call outs that they've agreed upon for things, communication can make or break a team, a duo, a trio, whatever, but especially a duo, there's a per it's a perfect balance. There's a perfect amount of people in the call that everybody can talk, everybody can communicate and get what they want to cross. And if you're concise and if you're clear and if everybody understands what's going on, this is how you become absolutely dangerous. Calling out to other people, I want you to do this, saying I'm here so that when somebody swings a corner, I know that's my teammate. I know that's not an enemy. I'm not going to shoot that. Of course, there's going to be a lot of team killing done along the way, but working on communication as a duo is going to make you absolutely deadly. So what we're going to do is we're going to work through a few clips of us doing this well. Uh, I am by no means a, one of the greats at this game. I do not claim to be somebody who's really, really good or even plays as as an excellent duo, but I spend all my time basically playing as a duo and I spend a lot of time trying to refine these skills. So we've definitely had a few really good moments and we're going to talk through some of those moments right here. So when we talk about being able to make really effective plays with really basic map knowledge, you don't have to have thousands and thousands of hours in this game. This clip comes to mind. Me and a duo, we identify where an enemy is. Uh, he takes a position. I take a separate position and we get these guys. Basically, they have no idea where we are or where we're coming from. So we can take a look at this clip. But someone's in here. I don't know what level, but I just heard someone move. Yep, first. I'm gonna go around front. He's dead. He had a buddy, he's dead. So that was super simple, and that kind of showcases all of that stuff in a super simple way. The communication there was tight. All we said was, there's somebody in here. I'm going around front. My bet, my buddy said he's dead. The communication was very simple. Additionally, um, once again, you didn't need crazy map knowledge of this to execute this play, right? Like everybody knows the dorms has side entrances and front entrances. When I run across there and when I see this guy kind of standing out in the middle of the hall, I obviously don't want to re-peek because I'm going to be on a left side peek. He's probably expecting me to re-peek. So my buddy just takes this. A lot of this stuff comes when you play with a very specific person over and over again. My buddy just moves up to that door, takes the right side peek. I say, hey, I'm moving around. He calls, he's killed one. I run in, boom, this guy is facing that direction because that's exactly, that's where the enemy is. His buddy just died to that guy down there. I was able to move while his, uh, while my buddy Ben's shots were going. So my, a lot of my steps are masked uh, because of his shots. And when it comes to sound and positioning, one of the biggest things is that people will always, people will almost always 
stay on the threat that they can see over the threat that they can hear. If you are actively in a fight with somebody and uh, you hear somebody else coming up, a lot of times people are thinking, yeah, okay, but I need to take care of this guy first because I know where this guy is and this guy's probably just running up. So being able to move when there's any sort of fight happening will net you success so often. People are often so f afraid of their own audio. They don't want to move. They don't want to push. They don't want to flank because they're afraid that the enemy's just going to hear them. Well, this is where a duo can be so strong or any sort of squad, but a duo can be so strong. He's taking the fight. He's masking my steps. Even if this guy heard me, he's so worried about the guy he can see. Boom, we take him out and that's two people down immediately. Before we move on, I want to take a second to thank the sponsor for this video, and that is Mackie, who is showing off their brand new MCaster Live. Audio is complicated and confusing, but at the same time, it's one of the most important parts of whatever you're creating. If you like to stream from your phone, streaming IRL stuff or doing a podcast on the go, but you don't like the built-in microphone, well, now you can plug right into your phone and stream using high-quality audio. This entire thing can be powered via a USB brick on the go, which makes it extremely portable. It's got three different channels, and with those three channels and all of that input, there's a ton of flexibility. You can go out to headphones or out to speakers or both and there's a lot of flexibility on the sound the first two channels have access to a suite of contour effects and stream effects the contour effects is this bottom row here this is like kind of eq presets where once you find the preset that you like you can blend that in as you can see i'm turning this down this first one is kind of like adding a little bit of low end to my voice i can blend that in all the way up or find a happy medium and you can blend these things into channel one and channel two independently above that you've got your stream effects which are all sorts of voice changing effects you've Got, like you can add reverb and you can go all the way up really intense or you can just blend in a tiny bit if you want more information on the mcaster live you can use the link down in the description below and mackie is also hooking up our community with a giveaway where they're giving away an mcaster live one of their microphones a boom arm some of their wireless headphones as well a ton of different stuff that link will be in the description and in the pinned comment as well once again a huge thank you to mackie for sponsoring the video and with that let's get back into it and this on the other hand is where more advanced map knowledge comes in i'm playing on last with Trey, we hear some audio cues and we immediately start formulating a plan. Here's that clip. Okay. Get my stand back. This door's open still, by the way. Get in my stand back a little bit. Okay, I'm going for it. I got one, there's another one uh, to the left. Got him, got him. I'm out here. Don't put uh if you push out it'll be me. So, once again, when it comes to communication for this clip, it's very clean. We're not derping around. Trey does most of the communication and everything he's saying is relevant. As soon as we hear the audio cue, this is where some of that advanced map knowledge comes in. As soon as we hear the audio cue, Trey knows exactly what button that guy's pushed and where to go. As I'm following him, he says, hey, split off, go down the stairs. I'm going to drop on him. And that basically puts the enemy. We don't know how many there are, but between the two of us. So he calls for me to do that, which I just immediately start rotating and do. This is actually like a whole nother thing we could talk about. Um, having some sort of maybe not leader, not maybe not in-game leader, but always deferring to somebody. Uh, it's hard when two people are trying to call plays at the same time, when two people want to do different things at the same time. Me, in this case, just deferring to Trey and saying, I'm just going to do whatever you tell me to do, helped us win this as opposed to me being like, no, I want to jump down here and do this. So if somebody's more proficient at a map or if some, if you just want to test out kind of like in-game leaders, that can actually be super helpful. Another tip here is we kind of wait to execute at the same time. He says he's getting stamina, so I'm waiting here at the top of the stairs. I know the stairs give out a ton of audio. I'm not just going to run down while Trey is trying to get stamina because then this guy can push me. And then he says, I'm ready to go. Boom, we're going to do it. I hear him fight. Trey calls out. I've killed one. There's another to the left. I move in. Boom. There's no better feeling than this, than pushing a guy that knows you're there, but you're behind him and he just has no idea where you're coming from. He knew he's in a fight once again. He's always going to be working at the guy that he can see. He just saw Trey. He just saw Trey kill his buddy. He's focused on that direction. I swing in and boom, we're able to drop this. So another really nice pinch, simple communication. This definitely shows off some more advanced map knowledge. I played a lot of labs, but obviously Trey's played a whole lot more. Even knowing 
what button is being pushed just by the audio cue there. Uh, that just kind of shows off the more you play a map and the more you hone those skills, the more advanced flanks and pinches you can do with your duo. One last clip showing off these principles, and this is a good one showing off how you can even get the job done with bad communication and how to look back, maybe watch your own clip or go, you know, reflect on a play and how to like refine communication between a duo. I guess I just like suicide. Are you this. healing? No. Someone's, someone's uh, right in. So the first room, the first room, the, if he was going to come up ice cream metal side, like he's, Left he's, right. uh, if you're right, you're right. Huh? I had shot him by the first room on the left. He went up. Got him, got him, got him. I'm clearing this side now. So obviously I struggled there with the communication. I couldn't just put my thoughts. I didn't know what to say. I wanted to make sure. And it definitely tripped me up. Now, no, and we were all, we were, everybody was in a place where it was okay. We weren't like actively taking shots, but I just couldn't wrap my head around what I wanted to say there. I hear the audio of somebody healing above me. And I know he's in one of those two rooms, one of the first rooms you come in from ice cream side. If you go up metal onto, I'm giving a lot of information and it's just taking me forever to get that call out. Uh, I'm also like, he's like right or left. And I'm like, what direction is he going to be facing? That's the kind of stuff to refine where if you like understand or come to the understanding with your teammate that every time I make a call out, I'm always going to be referencing it from your direction so that you don't have to say my left, your right, because that can be confusing. Um, that kind of stuff. It was tripping me up here, but Desmond was able to kind of like sift through that information peak. He saw the guy, he took some shots. And then once again, using the audio to position for me, I knew Desmond was upstairs. I was on one. So I don't want to be just like barreling out there. I want to wait for the, the perfect opportunity. I hear Desmond's shots. I run up. And as I'm making my flank, I'm trying to seek that information from him. Uh, you know, what did you say? And he said, I hit him in the head. And then Desmond would, does an excellent call. out. He's like, I hit him in the head. He's not died. First room on the left. He makes that call. Even though he's on Desmond's right, he knows I'm coming up these metal stairs. He says, first room on the left. As soon as I get up here, I start pre-firing swing in and this guy doesn't know what to do he hears the metal he knows he's pinched you can't jump out these windows uh he's in a really bad spot here even if he took me down desmond is basically like right there to finish up this fight and boom i was able to swing on him so like always map knowledge and positioning are always just fundamental core things to know in escape from tarkov and to practice and when you're introducing a squad or any other people communication will absolutely make or break that team or that play that you're trying to do so i hope that this helps being able to break down specific moments that were we executed well or at least decent enough to win the fight and kind of break down how to utilize those things once again you can practice this stuff and start utilizing this stuff right away. You don't have to have thousands and thousands of hours. There are simple flanks. There are simple maneuvers that you can do right away as long as you're practicing that with your squad and then refining those things as you go, refining your call outs, refining the communication, getting better at map knowledge, getting tighter angles and cooler plays and cooler flanks. And all of this will start coming together. So I hope this helped. I hope this gave you something to work on. And I hope that you guys can go out there and start being super effective duos or squads in Escape from Tarkov.